This is now part two of the investigation for June the 29th, I think it is today, 2021, and talking about- 30th, 30th, June. Oh, 30th, I'm sorry, June 30th. <laughs> I'm very famous for not knowing the date. <laughs> okay, so anybody have any questions about what we've been going through here? And it's kind of, probably amazing you that you know actually a lot of this stuff now if you've been hanging around for a year or so and we've been going through things you may have heard a lot of this before if you haven't been here before feel free ask questions anything's fine I can't believe it <laughs> yep yeah. Sarah, good for you. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? Okay. Yeah, good, thank you. So I um, I thought it might be nice to, well, I will have a question about mundane and super mundane. And I know you went through the um, some description of, of those. And I just wanted to go back over that. Uh, what I've written down in my notes is about the mundane understanding is, is when you would have a more conceptual understanding of the, the practice and the teaching and you reference about the Four Noble Truths and that the super mundane is when you have direct knowledge, it's become experiential. And I wanted to check here, I've written down, it's through the experience of Nibbana. And I wanted to know if these terms are specific to to, to that, or if they have um, a, a, broad, a broader usage, uh, whether you can, whether you can uh, describe supramundane as, as in other aspects where you've got direct experience so that it's moved beyond the conceptual training and an understanding that you're working towards. They don't usually use the, um, the supramundane um... For instance, this is saying by realizing Nibbana with the path constitutes the super mundane right view. Okay, um, direct penetration, uh, penetration of the truths is when you completely understand them and you start using them all the time and you understand the structure of the truths exist inside the training. You're watching it all the time, you know, so you're seeing the suffering and the cause of it, you're catching, you're, you're catching that. And when you start catching that, like when the man in New York suddenly had things happening automatically, he crossed the line with super mundane on the path, actually. We never really said that to him. I think back then I didn't really have a familiarity with this as well uh, at that time. But, but the super mundane is talking about path is, uh, attainment of path is getting into the first jhana and starting down the track. That's attaining path knowledge, okay? And and path not sometimes it's path knowledge, sometimes it's just getting on track. Some mm. people have to go through one time to reach sotapanna. Some people it will happen to them, where everything seems to come together and it's like all of a sudden a big oh, wow, <laughs> you know, and they're sitting there in a dhamma talk and it just goes off. And if you talk to them, all of a sudden all these people pieces in this puzzle, like sitting in a jigsaw puzzle on the table in the seashore, all just went <laughs> like that. And they went together. They fit. Yeah. But it's that's like an internal shift. I'm sorry. Yeah, it like is. An internal shift. It's an internal that then means shift. like your operating system has changed. Yeah. And then after that happens, usually they don't have very much trouble with the brain, uh, like fighting them to do the six R's. It, the immediate, if it isn't automatic, it comes very quickly to become automatic. So, but I don't hear, this is my experience. I don't hear people, the, 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 um, the, uh, the bhikkhus, I don't find them writing about super mundane except in terms of Nibbana or in terms of path, but this is getting into talking about 
uh, the understanding, the level of understanding. But I don't think you could say it, I've got the super mundane understanding of First John. It's a nice idea, but I don't hear them writing about it like that. I'm just saying that. I find I've been exposed to a lot of the Buddhist wheel from Polytech Society and a lot of the early pamphlets because of Bonte, lots of those have been put in front of my face and I've been told to read those. And I don't see that coming up except in the terms of Nibbana. And as a, a mundane, now the mundane practice and super mundane practice, I hear them talk about that towards Nibbana, toward concerned mm. with path, okay? Um, But I don't, I don't, I can't recall finding super mundane being applied to individual types of accomplishments along the path. Yeah, you know, see, there is, a, there was a chart I saw once that talked about the attainment of first jhana, the attainment of second jhana, the attainment of third jhana, and even fruition in the first jhana, fruition in the second jhana, fruition in the third jhana. And that was interesting. And, and I could equate that to someone who touches the first jhana and has the joy come up and then uh, they can't uh, have it, they can't see where it happens again. See, once mm -hmm. it happens to you, after using a, it a while, if you go back and you start to do determinations, you play with determinations, and then if they're working right, I would say that's fruition, a good place of saying that's, you have a fruition of that because if you say, I will sit no higher than the first jhana and it happens, then you could say, wow, I got that one down, you know, pretty much. But, but when you go to sit in your investigative meditation, um, you're not, you don't do determinations because you're trying to get all the way down the path each time. So you don't set yourself up on a determination, see? However, if you had an accident, like this is the question, what good are these determinations? We sort of fell over into that subject. But um, if you had an accident and you wanted to uh, handle it, like when I was under the tree, I did a determination, I will stay here in the third jhana. You know, that's where I wanted to be because I could let go of my body completely and I would be there. And then, and then I was just observing everything that was happening until they came. Uh, to to lift the tree off <laughs> yeah see so it's a handy tool to have this development but you develop all you have develop your line the way we do it is you develop your line all the way down to the eighth john and try to go through at least once then you would start to look at learning determinations i don't know how they do it in other traditions i never investigated that much yeah okay Great, yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you for the question. Anybody else have a question? Mm. Sarah coming back for more? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah, I will. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to verify uh, about the, uh, what do you call it? The FEMQA, Faith, Energy, Mindfulness, Concentration and Wisdom. <laughs> and then you said, and then it becomes automatic. Yeah. And then I didn't, I didn't quite, I didn't quite capture it. And okay. then you said it went yeah. into the seven yeah. enlightenment factors. You know how you memorize, well, they don't do it anymore, I bet. But in, in high school in 1967, we had three sentences. And we, if we said those three sentences, we could memorize the whole entire periodical table, which at that time, I think had something like, I want to say it was um, 69 or something. Now it's like over 100. I don't know what they do. I <laughs> probably have to recite a whole paragraph. But this is just a way of remembering to say femqua is just to remember its faith, energy, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. I had to think of ways to make myself remember these things, yeah. And um, the um, EPI, E-E-P-I, you know, the enthusiasm, energy, purification of mind, pur purity of mind and investigation is the, are the pieces of the, the powers that you're trying to develop. Enthusiasm, natural enthusiasm in your practice. Um, energy, 
purity of mind, keeping your precepts so there's nothing that's going to come up. That whole thing about the precepts protecting you from the hindrances. Uh, I have to say uh, that, um, well, I don't know. <laughs> um, you're protecting yourself from the hindrances and what people don't realize that is if you leave the precepts behind and go out in life, anything that happens, if you don't clear it right when it happens and take your precepts again, causes a residual peace to be back here. And when you're practicing in meditation, you're giving your message to your mind. It's a communication system with mind and you are trying to make it operative and mind um, you know, is getting more and more willing to stay open and learn. Where before it was controlling, staying close and taking care of you, protecting you, your brain, the protection system was protecting you. It's now open. So the idea that you can make progress with your meditation, but go home and break your precepts and come back again into retreat and just fool around with it, it's just silliness. You know, it just doesn't work. I have to turn the water again. Just one second. I'll be right back. Yes. Okay. Anybody else have a question? Hmm. Okay. So we're just about finished. Um, I think I covered everything in this. Um, if you have any question about right view and the value of it, um, and what we are uh, what we were talking about today, you know, please write me a note, or I will. Um, I will certainly write you back with an answer, I promise. Okay. And so I'll let everybody go now. And um, thank you for coming. I hope you come back again. I think um, we might be starting a series. Uh, I've been also, I would like to know if, if anybody would write a note and let me know, please, if you would like to hear the breakdown of the Sigalavada Sutta. We did the Sigalavada Sutta, which is like the Vinaya for the lay people, but we didn't go over the individual pieces. I simply read the Sutta to you slowly and it was kind of nice and it gave you an idea of all the things that are covered, but I do have a breakdown system to go over with you for each of those uh, pieces in the Sigalavada. And it's, I think it would be worth it. I'll tell you what the topics are and then you can think about it and let me know. This sutta covered basic morality was the first part. Then building and managing wealth, the advice for the building and managing of wealth. And then the third part was protecting the assets and the wealth, the six, uh, yeah six ways of squandering the wealth that you should avoid. And then false friends and true friends that support you or don't support you. And then the protecting relationships is the fifth part, protecting your relationships and the importance of the relationships. And Let's see, I think there's one more. Qualities for success in your life. And that's the end of it. Qualities for success for your life and the qualities of successful leaders and entrepreneurs is the last part. So it's real interesting to have this. I didn't know it was here and I finally found this and it's, uh, that's what you get for cleaning the closet. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, I think it's worthwhile if you're interested in going further with the Sigilavada Sutta. And then um, 
So I would like to hear from you if you're interested in this. It may take one, I think we can do it in one sitting, but it may take two sittings to do this. I'm not real sure. And bring questions about it if you like. I'll send, I'll put the topics over there. Okay, Bonte, I'll put them over and we can we can post them if you're interested in hearing what the Buddha had to say about this. So um, it, he was very smart about this. He, in the uh, time back then, the people didn't have anything to do with the Vinaya of the monks. It was their business and it wasn't in the public knowledge. Now today, the Vinaya is out there and I think there can be some confusion about, uh, should I be trying to live my life like this? And the Vinaya is for the monks and for the nuns. But the Sigalavada Sutta was structured to cover all of the things that are important for the lay people, okay? So I think we're going to do a closing. Okay. Yes. May suffering ones be suffering free. free. And the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief. And may all beings find the grief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth Devas and Nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours. May they long protect the most dispensation. Uh, 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 uh,